how can we serialize Python custom objects into JSON strings? That's what we'll talk about in this particular video. So let's get cracking. Hello everyone, this is Varup here. This is the third video in a mini series of working with JSON in Python. If you haven't already watched the previous two videos, you should definitely check those out. I'll put the links in the top there. So you should watch those first and then come back to this video. So let's get started with this video then. So we have a class over here that you see a person class with name and age. And we have an object created uh, with the name John and age 40. So we have seen this in the last video. So what we want to do is convert this John object here into this JSON string that you see on the right. That is serialization. The reverse is deserialization and we'll talk about that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. So how can we do this? How can we serialize this object to get this JSON string? Well, in the last video, we have seen dump else. Would that work here? Can we do something like, uh, can we do this? Can we just directly use json.dump else? Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. So if you said it will give an error, you would be correct. So let's run this and see. So we get a type error saying the person object we have is not JSON serializable. Now, the reason we get this error should be obvious by now. Uh, this is because we haven't told Python how to serialize our object. So let's see how we can do that. We can serialize this John object in multiple ways. We'll go through all of them here and you can pick the one that suits you. The first way is to do it manually. What I mean by that is we extract the values out of the dictionary and then construct the JSON string all by ourselves. So this is how it would look. So as you can see, we have taken the values out of the person object with p.name and p.age, and we have created the JSON string with an F string here. By the way, these double braces here, that is how you escape braces in F strings. With this approach, we have created the JSON string all by ourselves, And as you can see, we haven't used the JSON module at all. If I run this, as you, as you can see, we do get the output as we expect. So this approach, even though it's quite easy to do, it's not really scalable. If you have nested objects, this can easily get quite complex and you can also not change any formatting. That is, if you want to have two indents instead of four indents, or maybe instead of it being all on one line, if you want to do multi lines, it's not that easy to do all of that here. So this is clearly not the solution for most of the times. So we'll leave this one and move on to the next approach. So the second approach is where we use an encoder function to do the encoding for us. So what is an encoder function? This is what the JSON documentation tells us. The key part of this is right here. It says it should return a JSON encodable version of the object. It means that we have to either return a JSON string directly or we should return an object that can be JSON encoded. For example, we know dictionaries and lists are JSON encoded, so your encoder function can return those objects as well. So let's write our encoder function to return a dictionary object. So the encoder function has to take the person object as input and return a dictionary that can be JSON serialized. So we can do that quite easily with this approach. So that's how our encoder function would look right now. So we return a JSON dictionary only if the object is of person type, otherwise we raise a type error. So that's our encoder function. Now, how do we use this function? So we can use this with the json.dump else function. So the way we use this encoder function is by passing this function using the keyword default to the json.dump else function. Like this. So now you can see we are passing the, the encoder to the json.dump else. So when we do this, the json.dumpS function, instead of serializing by itself, it just passes the object to our function. And whatever our function returns, it tries to convert that into a JSON string. And in this case, since we return a dictionary, dumpS can convert the dictionary into a JSON string. So that's what we'll do. So if we run this here, uh, we get the same output as before. The added advantage here is that because we're using dumpS function, we can use the functionality that dumpS provides us. So we can pretty print the JSON string or change the indentation as well. 
as you can just see. So this is how we can do it with an encoder function. Now, this is a really good approach and something you can definitely do, but there is one more way we can uh, do encoding in Python, which is using an encoder class. So like before, we use the JSON or dumpS for encoding, but instead of passing an encoder function, we create an encoder class and pass that instead. So an encoder class is anything that subclasses json.encoder. So let's create our own uh, json encoder here. I'm calling it person encoder and we subclass json.encoder. Now inside this we have to uh, override the method called default. The content of this default method can be exactly same as our encoder function so I'll just copy that. So that's how our encoder class looks. We can actually leave it like this here, but there's one more thing we can do. So instead of raising the type error ourselves, we can let the super class take care of it. So we can do, so we can do it this way by calling the super classes default function. And that takes care of raising the type error instead of us having to do that. So that's our encoder class. Now, once we have our encoder class, we pass it to the JSON or dumpS, but instead of using the default keyword like before, we use the class keyword. And that's it. That's pretty much the only change. So you pass in with the class keyword instead of the default keyword. And if we try to run this, we will get the exact same output as before. So this is how you can encode with an encoder class. Now with an encoder class, we can also encode in another way that is by creating the object of this encoder class. On the encoder object, we can call the default method and pass in our object. And as you can see, that also gives us a JSON string as the output. So these are all the possible ways in which you can serialize a Python object into a JSON string. So that is all for this video. I hope this has been useful for you. If you have any further questions on anything or if you want to suggest topics for new videos, you can definitely leave them in the comments. I'll check those out. And there are also a lot of links in the description. So they might be useful for you. You can go through that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.